Home the women, Rachel Smith did, however, manage to defeat Shalim Walrun at 14 and 19 to advance to their final. While Julian Michael Jackson White was leading Winston McEnroe Griffith in two sets before the rains came. CBC Sean Green reports on that brief matchup. This is Julian Michael Jackson White taking on Winston Griffith in the far court in the green. Shot for shot, pound for pound. But once White gets close to the net, it's good night nurse. White with another opportunity to step inside, and he does it with class. Here's one point that he had to work really hard for, as his opponent was no pushover indeed. And when White thought he had him, he was wrong. And again, until he got a gift, and he unwrapped a four-armed monster. Then after keeping Griffith busy on the baseline, he found the angle and executed beautifully. And just like that, White finished it, winning 21-15. Here we are in game two with White in the far court, testing his opponent's backhand several times. And after he passed that test, the forearm exam came and he was found wanting. Then from another serve, he left his opponent scrambling. Griffith actually looking to compete in this play, and he looked really good oh, for a moment. And then, then White polished it off with this one to win the second at 22 to 20. And after that, the heavens opened and brought a premature end to the evening's games. Sean Green, CBC Sports. Thanks, Sean, and he'll have more action from last night's semis in CBC Sports starting at 8.30 p.m. The West Indies three-day match against the Sri Lankan Cricket President's eleven will now start on Friday rather than tomorrow. This is due to rain, which has left Yelp Field very wet. This is the only tour game ahead of the two-match test series against Sri Lanka. The first test is scheduled to be played at Gaul International Stadium from October 14th to 18th. And staying with cricket, the entire opening day fixtures of the 2015 Guardian Group Herman Griffith Primary Schools cricket competition have been washed out. This morning's thunderstorms put paid to any chance of starting any of the 12 scheduled games around the island. The next set of matches will be played on Friday, weather permitting. Meanwhile, rain only affected the first hour on day two of the Barbados PCL trial game at Kensington Novel. We'll have a report on, the, on that game at 8.30 during CBC Sports. Combined forces are a perfect 2-0 after they claimed a victory in the latest game of the GAIAT 20 tournament. Playing at Rice's last night, there were six wicket winners over DHL. At the game was CBC's Anne Burke. In a change of tactics from their first game, Combine Forces opted to field first, and it paid off early. Dejan Ford holds on to the ball to send Shinaldo Taylor packing for two, DHL eight for one. And with the introduction of Larry Babb, wicket number two came, Michael Williams bowled, DHL ten for two. Bab will strike again as wicketkeeper Ellie Holder gets the glove to it. Bab with figures of 2 for 12. DHL in early trouble as Corey Scantabury heads back to the pavilion. In came Jaden Jones and he got the game's first boundary. But DHL will lose a fourth wicket when a mad dash by Rico Small would be in vain. Who run out after adding just three to the score. DHL in woes at 33 for 4. The fifth wicket was claimed in spectacular form. Raymond Augis with a one-handed catch. Let's see it again. That was the play of the night. Jones continued his quest to steer the ship with another boundary. But the wickets were tumbling. Kevin Howard bowled by Ramsey. A soft dismissal will see Andre Harbin stay a short one, caught by Sheldon Blaze for a duck. The very next ball would also see a wicket tumble as Prima sent in a direct hit at stumps. Jeremy Marshall joins Harbin in the pavilion with a duck. DHL 49 for 8. The only six of the innings was attributed to Jones and it was a big one. But Jones would give out his hand, caught Prima's ball by Prasad for 24. Prasad claiming 2 for 8. And the first ball of the 17th over will be the end for DHL. As Jason Lewis goes, caught by Ellie Holford, ball shot and blaze, DHL all out for 62. So an easy target of 63 for combined forces, but it seemed they too would have trouble in the camp. As Shane Ramsey faced six balls, claimed two runs before being caught by wicketkeeper Shinaldo Taylor, 
seven for one. He was quickly followed by skipper Brian Corbin, bold Antonio Strong. The score still on seven. DHL were in celebration mode. Wicket number three was Ellie Holford, LBW to Strong, now 13 for three. Conway forces team now to have to draw on strategy, and in came Prasad, and he set to task, easing this one to the ropes. But combine forces lost Adrian Ford, bowled to Strawn, who was wrecking havoc with the ball. Rashawn Primus utilized this short delivery to his advantage, dispatching it to the ropes. Prasad on the other end continued his assault, four more. He then went hard, a big six. Prasad ended not out on 32, Primus not out on 7 as combined forces reached a desired target, making 64 for 4 to win by 6 wickets. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Thanks Anne-Marie and in the night's other game, Flight Kitchen were 23 run winners over Caribbean aircraft handling PSA. But in first, Flight Kitchen made 144 7, Amal Nathaniel had a knock of 46 and Ian Doughty 20. For aircraft handlers, Dwayne McLean and Levi Cadogan had two wickets apiece. Now, in reply, aircraft handlers fell short of the 141 target, only being able to make 117 for eight. Shaquem Blades had a knock of 30 and Cadogan 23. For Flight Kitchen, Amal Nathaniel took three for 21 and Richard Young and Ian Doughty had two wickets each. Matches will continue on Saturday. That's sports for now. I'll be back at 8.30, but up next, business. <laughs>